The coffee is hot, but the conversation is hotter. Welcome back to the Stumble Will Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Halis, a digital storyteller and video producer. And I'm Chris slash Mr. Halise, and apparently I use two different names on the internet. Yeah. And welcome to anep- another episode. Anep- up, up. Welcome to another episode of the Stumblewell Podcast. You thought we were done. Just kidding. Here's one more <laughs> podcast episode. <laughs> So, I was on the internet the other day, Mm. looking at feminism stuff and other such things, Mm. (laughs) and I saw a YouTuber that I like to watch, she's also a filmmaker, all-around amazing person, Iz Harris. She and her husband, Johnny Harris, he also works for Vox, he does a lot of those Vox videos that you see. Yeah, I enjoy those. Yeah. They were doing a QA and a on her channel, I think. She dropped this interesting phrase. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. That could be a Stumblewell topic. She kept saying that they had a 50-50 marriage. Now, caveat, they do have two children. One of them is special needs. So, Ooh, that's yeah. Sad. So I can see why they would use that terminology, 50-50. Um, yeah. But it got me thinking about us. Like, do we have a 50-50 marriage? And so I just figured I would posit that question to you and we would discuss it here on the Stumblewell podcast. And so she posited it actually two weeks ago? Yeah. Two or three? Yeah, we had one of our porch dates. One of our porch dates. So three weeks ago you told or you asked me about that on the porch and I thought, no, we was, do not have a 50-50 partnership. Yeah, he was very quick. He said, oh, no, it's not 50-50, not 50-50 at all. And I was like, oh. Part of that was delicious wine. And that made me a little sad to think about that. Like, oh man, I'm not in a 50-50 relationship. Am I truly a feminist? Am I truly here for the equal and betterment of the sexes, you know? Well, I mean, so purely, I'm not a mathematician. I'm not going to pretend to be one, but like, it's not straight down the middle 50-50. Yeah. Even uh, anyone that says, oh, it's 50-50, it's never truly 50-50. But Mm. on top of that, I think... There are facets of our marriage and our lives that I do more of, and there's facets that you do more of. True. Um, so in the grand scheme, does it kind of level out to 50-50? I mean, no. I still feel like it's... <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks for watching um, and listening. No, it's... Um, I still feel uh, it's like 60-40 maybe. 60-40? Who's in, the 60? In your favor. In my favor? Yeah, you're doing 60. I'm doing 60? Feels like it. Really? Okay. I'm not going to argue that, but for me, it's hard to figure out how would you even quantify a 50-50 marriage? Because sure, maybe I do more of the like home stuff, but I don't make as much money as you do. Oh, that wasn't even a factor in my calculation. See? You're projecting a little bit. How am I projecting? What am I projecting? Oh, no, insecurity, <laughs> financial insecurity. Sure. It's like the bat signal. Financial insecurity. It's like a broken, it's a broken piggy bank. Yeah. I feel like you have to factor in who's contributing the most financially to the overall household. Granted, we did figure out what I had to contribute in this new sabbatical, when's this sabbatical truly ending, who gonna know thing. You know, like we figured out what my, what I need to contribute into it. I feel like the sabbatical is just... It's like someone just determining, uh, this is my drinking hat, and then this is also my sleeping hat. It's, you just wear the same hat. And, yeah, it's whatever I wanted to. So the sabbatical <laughs> is just, like, you are on sabbatical, but at some point, you'll just be, it's like, this, is, this was the new normal. This was the baseline. Oh. Why didn't you pick up on it? Really? Why are you still using old terminology, trying to chain me to the past? <laughs> That'll be me and in a year you talking to me oh okay i think so no let's go ahead and clarify i am still technically on sabbatical right now what i want is for this to be the new normal but i am making enough money and then it's not a sabbatical anymore i feel like that's everybody at this point well yeah well i mean just i mean we're not talking about okay the vacuum the 2020 vacuum we're talking about 
just everything else. Everybody else just like, oh, yeah, I mean, I would love to do this and then make more money or make money as a result of it. Right. Yeah. But I'm oh, so that's oversimplifying it. I was going to say, well, you know, finances are whatever. But clearly from the number of Stumblewell episodes that we've done on finances, finances are not whatever. Yeah. Past Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be very so flipping about things. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm on your side. You with make past it a big deal. <laughs> past Christopher. Bad husband. Past Christopher. I mean, even with um, even with finances, I still feel like you do more. Because, I, I mean, I go to work and I do things. I just lucked out and I have a good-paying job. I don't know if you lucked out. I think your good-paying good job is the culmination of a lot of sacrifice on both of our fronts. And grace. And grace from God. That is what I think. And you do hustle a lot more. That's just because I, I just, have to. I just grind for eight hours. No. Oh, no. It's like ten hours. Yeah, you're at work pretty... You have a long work day, considering it's a traditional work day. It's a long one. Is it 10 hours? You're there for a while. You leave here at, what, 7.40? You there, don't come back until 6. I get there by six. about 8. It's like nine and a half hours. Okay. That's fair. But I, go, I mean, I just go over there. They, you know, take a red-hot poker to me, and I come home. It's like, oh, cool. But it's, it's just the thing that I can do. It's just another... It's not burden. It's possibly a bird. <laughs> this is something that I just go and, and do and come home. You are since twenty since twenty eighteen. Yeah. You've been hustling, you've been trying to figure out what avenues you're gonna do and when you can officially do X, Y, and Z and True. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of stress. My eye's been twitching again. Mm-hmm. But on top of that, um I hate cleaning. And you do the bulk of the cleaning. Yeah. I don't enjoy it. Actually, that's a lie. Sometimes I do enjoy it. I just need to clear my head. It's kind of a mindless task you can do, and you still feel like you're being productive because at the end of it, you've cleaned, you know? But then there's other days where it's just like, <sighs> could you wash a dish, you know? Mm. <laughs> Something. <laughs> Something or another. But you pay most of the bills. Or you've well, set up not, the auto pays and stuff. And not financially. That's more just like, yeah, I've done, make sure that all the, all the bills get taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. The money you pull from is joint. But right. you like have handled it. Remember, it was, a, it was funny, y'all. It was a big deal. When we switched phone carriers, when we switched to Verizon. Oh, my God. <laughs> Verizon, not a sponsor. <laughs> I, for whatever reason, he was like, feminism, you be the main <laughs> account holder for Verizon. No, whoa, you got it twisted. Do I have it twisted? It. What happened? How did this happen? Tell the people. No, so I was trying to switch carriers, but because we were living in the shambles, mm -hmm. the permanent address that we had was the shambles. Yeah. I did not want $1,600 worth of phone to go to the shambles. Yeah. So I was trying to send it to a different address. And Verizon kept, the Verizon fraud kept like canceling it. Oh, right. So we ended up, and because I kept doing it, what, yeah, six or seven times? You got flagged. <laughs> no, I don't know if I got flagged, but we just. They wouldn't let you be the person after a while. Oh, no, but was that, was that it? Yeah, yeah. Eventually I had to go there and be the person and the guy, yeah, the technician was like, you need to be the signer. You need to be the main account holder person and he'll just be under you. And I was like. Yep. So now all the Verizon accounts <laughs> say your name. And I remember when we came in, because we had to like come back into the Verizon store again for something. And I was just like, <laughs> I'm the captain. <laughs> Even though it doesn't matter. And then I ended in within like a month, I ended up being annoyed because you kept wanting to like see making sure the bill was right and things like that. No, it, it was it was way stupider than that it what was, was um it? i wanted the perks like oh they had the monthly perk type of thing and you kept wasting the, you kept wasting the perks because you would not go in there and <laughs> click on them and so i said grant me access for the love of god please because if you, every if you do if you have your verizon account and you're like not terrible and pay your bill on time or whatever they give you just like random perk dollars for things. And he was like, you're not redeeming our perk. You have to go in and redeem them or you don't get them. 
Hilarious. All that to say, I learned that, do I really need to have my name as a sign-on account? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I don't, it's no, your 50%. spiritual gift to keep track of that. <laughs> sure. I'm willing to relinquish that. Well, so, and so what happens if... To you. Like <laughs> when the washing machine, washer-dryer broke? Mm-hmm. Who had to take point on that? You did. Whenever the dish or the... Oh, yeah. When the disposal went out, who had to let... Just be because you were at home, you had to let the guy come or like come in and fix everything. When you were going from the office and home, you had to work from home. And yeah. Instead of that. Yeah. So there's a little bit more sacrifices that you do. That's just the plague of being someone who doesn't work a traditional job, though. Because even when... Even when we weren't living with my parents and all that kind of stuff, I w- my family would still be like, but you're home, right? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, can you be at, hey, can you work from our house today to let these people in to do the thing? And it's like, yes, because I love you. Yes, I can do that. So I feel like that's just the work from home struggle. If you work, well, we all now, we all do now. But if you used to work from home and everybody would just utilize the fact that you worked from home let me know in the comments below well so do you feel like a successful marriage needs to be 50 50 that's a great question Hmm. future halis take notice i asked a great question i would think i think i think trying to get to a 50 50 marriage is the goal maybe if you are a follower of christ you are never going to truly be selfless as christ was right but it's like that curve you know you're trying to get you'll never hit it but you're trying to get as close to it as possible i don't know is that like an urgent news bulletin? yeah it's like this urgent news bulletin yeah today you know the little announcer voice i can't do it but like 1950s announcer there you go you got it today in 1939 new york you really should have been a voice actor anyway See, but we you could, could be benefit. Rich. You could benefit from that. Oh and it yeah. Could, it could, you know, annoy you now as a beneficiary of all this voice talent. Anyway, y'all, thank you for listening slash watching this podcast. We really appreciate it. A few we quick do. announcements, as Mr. Halise is beeping insinuated. Beep. Like the video. That really helps us out. If you didn't know that, liking the video helps a lot. Or if you're listening to us, I think if there's a like feature in whatever podcasting platform you were listening to us on, that helps us out a lot. Thank you. The other thing you can do if you're watching us here on YouTube, sit through an ad. Poor favor. Um, That really helps us out a lot. And that's just like any creator you're watching on YouTube specifically. If you can sit through the ad, it really helps them out. Um, and then finally, please engage with us in the comments below because, again, we like to hear from y'all. And that's one of the few ways that we can easily communicate with you quickly. So comment with your thoughts, dissenting opinions. We're open to it. Well, what's another way that you can support the podcast? The best way to support the podcast, if you want to take it a step further, if you want to really help us out over here at Stumble Well. Hit us up on Patreon, Patreon. patreon.com slash Halise. There you will get early access to videos as well as private weekly vlogs from me and early access to these podcasts before they go live to anyone else whenever we do them. And we are currently trying to get our Patreon up to $1,000 a month because then we'll make these podcasts every week. (laughs) Come hell or high water, come rain or shine. The spirit just entered you and I was just (laughs) watching... (laughs) Holy, well, like, wow. That wasn't even, that was never rehearsed. I know. <laughs> the coffee or the spirit? Because uh, it's the spirit for sure. Because I am trying to do this full time and make a career of it. So I know and I need to be better about promoting what I am capable of doing. And I'm here too. Yeah. So, patreon.com slash lease if the spirit moves you. Finally, there's like some merch under us. If, you know, buy a shirt. I don't know. Anyway, back to the podcast. Bye. Beep, beep. You know, that's how I I think that's the goal is that you're trying to get to 50-50, knowing that you'll never fully hit it, but it's something to strive for. I I think three weeks ago when we first talked about this, you know, in passing, I think 
my initial thought was, well, it just needs to feel like it's 50-50. But again, it, you oh, could be... you did say that. You can be in a bad marriage. Right. It's like, oh, it, it feels... Oh, man. You know, they can make it feel like it's 50 50. They're that, doing a lot. The manipulation, the drag, the person being dragged, the dead weight. Yeah. The dead weight will say, man, it's it's hard being this. Mm. That's a good point. Making it seem like they're doing a lot more. Yeah. So Ooh. I guess it can't. It can't just ha- like it can't just seem like it's 50 50. I guess in terms of effort and like physical exertion, mm-hmm. maybe it can be displaced, but then it's like, oh yeah, so maybe all around it does have to equal, a you know, fifty pap- percent, because it's like, oh well, Chris makes a little bit more money, but Halise does X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it's a matter of trying to understand and get to fifty-fifty at like every stage in the relationship. I feel like with the stage we're at in our marriage now, it's easier to find, I don't know if it's necessarily 50-50, but I think you had mentioned that we're pretty balanced now. I feel like we, at this stage of where we're at right now, it feels a lot more balanced, whereas in years past, it hasn't felt very balanced because we were still trying to even figure out, I guess, what roles we each had or like what roles we each could play well in the relationship. No, yeah. You know? Yeah. So I feel like where we're at right now in our lives is very, I don't think it's, 50, I guess it's not 50-50, but it feels a lot more balanced. Yeah, so I think that's that's the distinction. I, I don't think there needs to be a focus on 50-50. It just needs to be balanced because you can have like a seesaw and the fulcrum can be in the middle mm-hmm. or the tipping point. Um, and so, you know, it can be, it's the same amount of weight on each side, or if there's nothing there, then it more than likely will balance, but it can be, you know, the fulcrum can be at an extreme. Right. And it'll take a lot more effort to get it to balance, but it can still balance. Right. So that's a good point. Yeah. I guess that's probably a more realistic slash complicated way to say that you have a 50, 50 marriage. I just wanted to use the term fulcrum. Yeah. (laughs) Because I kept saying I wasn't a mathematician, but I know things. Do you? No, just that. <laughs> Do you? I mean, I guess so. I, is that the goal? That's a good question for y'all. Is the goal to have a 50-50 marriage or just a balanced one? You know? Like, are you actually trying to split all That's duties? What, what? You're You're about to hit the point, yeah. I think oh. you got it. Are you actually trying to hit all responsibilities of the relationship 50-50, like you do half of the laundry and you do half of the chores and you do half of the child rearing and you do half of the dog walking? Or is it more about just trying to figure out, almost like a puzzle, I guess? Or a, I don't know, what if your fulcrum thing? Your fulcrum something or another <laughs> situation that you create? <laughs> is it about just trying to play to each other's strengths in the relationship and then kind of hoping that as a whole it's all kind of pieced there so i feel like so the question is do you feel like it needs to be that granular that people need to keep score of everything or can't because i feel like we're more balanced like what we're not balanced on everything Mm -hmm. or you know it's give and take on a lot of stuff overall it's pretty balanced yeah um and i feel like the marriage flourishes with that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and there's some give and some take, but I think most marriages just need balance as opposed to, oh, well, it's 50, it's 50, 50. Yeah. But then that means like, is it truly 50, 50? And what do you, f- if he's not taking care of the kid as much, is that just something that you're like keeping in the back of your mind? And then later on you're like, well, you haven't done this and that you need to go take out the trash. Very stereotypical marriage stuff. I do that. <laughs> I'd be keeping score, y'all, low-key. <laughs> I'm bad about that. Well, that's something I've learned that I have to just, like, I need to just rein it in. And that's something, like, not even just with you, just with people in general. I keep a lot of internal scoring. You know how they say, what's that saying? Um, forgive and forget or whatever. I forgive. I don't necessarily forget, though. You know, that's just how I roll with a lot of stuff so in marriage it's really hard (laughs) for me to just like yeah take a step back 
Because you'll like do something and then I'll remember like, and that's why you ain't do it two years ago on that one time. Mm. And then your mom called and I was pissed. Because I can't forget things. I'm also very much a perfectionist. So it's like, to me, I'm in a relationship with you and I'm supposed to be striving for perfection and I've had to learn. I think when we went to couples therapy, that was one of the main things I got out of it. I know you didn't like it because it was just like, oh, I'm a product of my parents. I'm mad. For me, though, you it was exactly <laughs> the, the thing that would rub me. <laughs> what was the ultimate thing from therapy? I am my parents' child. Like, oh, crap. <laughs> Yeah, but for me, the old, the thing that was hard for me was that I am so, even though I'm very shades of gray when it comes to conversation and how people live, when it comes to my own life, I'm very like black and white, and I don't communicate actually very well on what I expect from people. I have a lot mm. of high expectations in general from everyone, um, and yeah. If people don't meet them, instead of just communicating like, hey, you didn't necessarily meet my expectations. And part of that is because I didn't tell you what they were. But shame on you for not knowing them. Yeah. <laughs> and also shame on you for not meeting them. Shame on you for everything. Right. But instead of just Sounds, communicating all of that, mm -hmm. I just leave. That's what I do. I don't waste time. Like, I don't feel like explaining this to you. I'll just leave. So... All the more reason why this is such a miraculous year, this ninth <laughs> year in our marriage, <laughs> that you stuck around for so long. But that was why when you finally were kind of like, I think I'm going to leave you. I was like, yeah. I don't know if I'd stick around for me. I didn't say just that. I saying. Just, was sa it was so. saying, is this a time where we need to like leave? Right. I didn't say, I think I'm going to leave you. I was not that resolved in it. You were definitely using language of like I am in the I am currently in the process of figuring out if I might should leave you or not, mm -hmm. and I was like I can't tell you whether to do that or not. I understand if you do though, because high key I'm trash. So that was the, that was how that, that conversation went. We're both trash, a little bit balanced. I mean everybody <laughs> balanced. Can't balance the seesaw without trash. One <laughs> side has to have trash. The other one has to have trash. Right. Anyway, the point of this podcast episode was to talk about marriages and if a marriage can truly be 50-50 or if it just needs to be balanced. And if it doesn't need to be balanced, then what does that actually mean? How can you define, like put a quantifiable, I don't know, definition, parameters, if you will, on a balanced relationship? I just, so I, I still think it, so not quantified, so it can't be, um, measured objective. Yeah. Oh, so objective. it's not, there aren't objective measures of, did we meet this? Then perfect. It, it is subjective. That's hard for me. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's hard for you, but subjectivity is, so is it balanced? So you can be wrong in that moment of whether or not it's balanced, but over time, again, it will average out. Do oh. I feel like this is balanced still? Do I feel like this is balanced still? I feel like I'm taking advantage of. And it's that moment. It's like, oh, okay. It's, it's never been balanced. Ah, so interesting. There will come a breaking point, maybe? Yeah. That's actually a good point. So do you, I guess for me then, the first like four-ish years, I didn't feel like it was very balanced. So it didn't actually mm. matter if it actually was or not. It's just that I didn't feel like it was, so it wasn't. Yeah. Mm. Well, because it's it needs to be both people because we are a symbiotic being. The mm -hmm. couple is the being, right? Uh -huh. um, if I feel like 2019 was pretty good and you felt like 2019 was pretty bad, 2019 <laughs> was mediocre. Then, <laughs> like it was, it's a combination of the two. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it's if I feel like it's balanced and you didn't feel like it's balanced, then. It's not balanced. It might be close to being balanced, but it is not balanced. Here's a better question then. Is is having a balanced marriage almost like having a uh, like a negotiation? What do they say in negotiation where if both people leave like mildly okay with the agreement, then it was a good negotiation? You know what I mean? Yeah. Both people, like no one. No one's happy. Like All no sides will not be happy, right? Yeah. No one's completely happy. Like no one got exactly everything they wanted, but they got. They figured out what was like 
the hard takeaways they had to get. Mm. That just sounds sad. That makes marriage sound real sad I was to sad. me. Because then you're just never truly, and maybe that's something that we're all like generationally having to deal with, this whole thing of like, I'm supposed to be living my truth all the time, forever. You know what I mean? So I have all sorts of problems with that statement because I don't even know what the truth is. How you live into that? <laughs> the truth now is not the truth five minutes from now. So it's like, how are you living that? I've got nothing to say. I just pulled the mic towards my face for effect. But <laughs> yeah, it's like, I need to, I need to be right about all things and all decisions at all times. Like, okay. You're going to have a real crappy life. Real bad. And you're going to look back on everything with a ton of regret. Come 70, 80 years old. I'm like, oh, I wish everything was better. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they would live with a ton of regret? Because it's not perfect. Oh. It's not balanced. Nothing is ever balanced. Oh. Or perfect. Oh, got you, got you, got you, you got just you. Just do the best that you can, and then you feel like, I've been cooking dinner a lot. I don't want to cook dinner anymore. So either you cook dinner, or we're going out. This was a, a situation from earlier this week. Yeah, Because you had been making dinner. Yeah, I was like, I'm done. <laughs> and I was like, I'm I was also a little depressed this week, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Anyway, keep going. But yeah, so you, you either put the pressure on the other person, like, okay, so either I will make dinner or we still resolve the situation and go out and get something. <laughs> Compromise. And we chose the latter. Yeah. I think I still just struggle with that. But that's how you balanced. Yeah. I guess so. I think there's something to the here. <laughs> I there's do. something in what you're saying that I like, but there's a lot that I don't. It just makes me feel like I am difficult <laughs> slash why terrible. You, why are you internalizing all these? Like, these are just. Well, no, it's just because like you're so matter of factly about it, and I still have not. I don't think I'm quite there, you know, mm. in in the relationship. Where you're just like, oh, Halise does it. Halise feels a certain type of way. I will just adjust to that. I am not there. Like sometimes you're in a rut, and I'm just like, but you have no reason to be that way. So fix yourself. You know. <laughs> Case in point: If I am sick, if I am sick, I better be dead. I better be dead in the corner of the room. Otherwise, I need to be. I need to fix my face. Get up. You, you can't swallow the Tylenol? Rectal Tylenol. <laughs> even if it's not rectal Tylenol, you better put that up in your rectum, figure out your stuff. That way you do not look sick. Otherwise, <laughs> you better not, you better just not be looking like you dying on the couch. That's what happens. That's the situation when I'm sick. She never gets sick as much. And when she does, she got the flu. She got one of the flu strains. It was, I think it was A. You got yeah, flu A. I think And I you did. just acted like it was a mild cold. And then you thought, I, I'm feeling kind of, I felt kind of tired and pretty bad this week. Next week, I caught it. <laughs> I was half dead everywhere. Bed, couch, bathroom, didn't matter. Half hanging off all the furniture. But you were, oh you were God. not having it. And you will not have it. I just But that is the balance. <laughs> the balance is I know how to fix myself now. I have a full quasi HEB pharmacy underneath the bathroom sink. So I know how to handle my symptoms. First of all, <laughs> I was raised in a family. <laughs> First it's a military family. I was raised in a military family when any of us got sick. My and my mom's a nurse like an old school nurse. So any of us would get sick and she was like, yeah, you're sick, but you're not dead. So you can just go lay down, like go quarantine yourself to your bed, come out to do certain things, but don't be like a burden to me, your mother. It's already tough being a mother. I don't need you to come out here being snotty and like, uh. And so that has just translated to me a little bit. And I know it's a problem because I also kept my nephew when he had a double ear infection for two days and I was just ready to just like, and he was all of, he was so young, he was like a year and a half. And I was just like, 
it's not that bad. <laughs> you know? The only thing that saved that boy, <laughs> the only thing was that he was half somehow related to you by blood <laughs> and he was under the age of two. That was the only thing that saved him. Otherwise, you would have just... I, I don't know. You would have just had everything lip. around him. Okay. I'm not British, but stiff upper lip. You be, But you be all woe is me, though. Yeah, because I feel like garbage. I have asthma. I know you do. It makes it worse. But y'all, y'all don't even know. He be just like, uh, uh, uh. Like, it's like, I mean, I know you don't feel good, but like, you ain't gotta be. Last just... time I. This, this devolved. This devolved it from 50 50, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's funny. It's entertaining, I feel. You just be doing the most. And I'm like, it's. But have now, a warm beverage, something. I come over here and I hang out, and I'm just out. And then if the fever and the chills take me, it's like, all right. I'm going back to the bed. Y'all don't even remember. Last time you got sick too, you were also like, "If my fever gets too high, I guess you'll just have to drag me to the tub and douse me with cold water." Like he be doing the most, y'all. He be saying the most. <laughs> it's too much. No, well, no, because the fever was not breaking with the Tylenol. So I don't know how you're going to, I mean, if my fever raises above 100.4 or 100, 104, you got to have to bring it down somehow. And I'm delirious, thinking I'm a sea cucumber. I can't help you. All that to say, something that is not balanced in our marriage is when one of us gets sick. We're still working on that. Progress. That's how that narrative plays out. Progress. <laughs> this last time you got sick, I was better. You were better. I was better. And that is because I journaled and fixed my face and then talked to you. Hmm. You know what's another difficult aspect of the podcast? Finding topics. Oh. If y'all have a topic that you would like to recommend to us, it will help make these a more regular thing. True. Because well. we, <laughs> I struggle even with the most potent wine and I don't know what else. It's just the muse does not hit as to what we should talk about. Do the end lines. I forgot what they are. Stumble. Stumble well. Stum stumble on. And we'll see you next time. Maybe. Bye.